Kia ora, year 12 and 13. This is an old question from the 2005 scholarship calc paper and it's question 6a. So is, question 3 is only for if you're at Dub C and you are following along with our scholarship tutorials. Um, this question is one where you have to first of all show that this equation can be turned into the standard form for a hyperbola equation. Um, and that, so that standard form for a hyperbola centered at the origin, we have this x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. And if we want to shift that, um, the center of that, instead of being at the origin, then we're going to have something in this form. Oh, hang on, I just have to turn off ink to shape on one note. Uh, y minus m squared over b squared equals 1, then we'd have a hyperbola in this case that was centered at the point km, and it would have asymptotes that went like this, and then the hyperbola would squeeze in here somewhere, right? So that's what we're talking about. We're just going to do a wee bit of algebra to get it into that form, and hopefully you can spot that the main technique we're going to be using is completing the square, right? We're going to separate the x stuff, separate the y stuff, and go from there. So once we've done that, then we're asked to do something with the tangent to this hyperbola. So that is where you should be thinking implicit differentiation. So if the tangent to the hyperbola at the point PQ is parallel to this straight line, then we have to show that P minus Q is equal to the H from up here. So P and Q are these coordinates. The only thing that, that might strike you as a bit hard in here actually isn't. It's just that E is the eccentricity of the hyperbola. So that's measuring the stretchiness of the hyperbola. And if you're at Dub C, we will have looked at that in class uh, and played with some really cool GeoGebra applets to see what happens when that changes. But in this question, we don't need to know any of that. We just need to know that E squared is defined as this thing here. Right, so it's really going to fall down to being a little bit of calculus and then a bit more algebra. So pause the video at this point and now that you've got those hints about completing the square, give the first part a go. I'm going to go through it um, fairly slowly, so I'm not going to miss many lines of working up. So we'll just start out by writing out what we've got. So 4x squared minus y squared minus 16hx plus 2hy plus 15h squared minus 4a squared is equal to 0. And h and a are both positive constants. Um, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I know that I'm going to want to end up with an x something term here. So I divided everything through by 4. We get x squared minus 1 quarter y squared. Now you don't have to do that. Um, here I've got plus 1 half hy plus 15... Let's see, here we've got 15 h squared, so this should be 15 over 4 h squared minus a squared equals 0. Now I'm going to reorder it with my x stuff and my y stuff next to each other. So x squared minus 4 h x minus 1 quarter y squared plus a half h y plus 15 over 4 h squared minus a squared equals 0. The next step is to start completing the square. So I'm doing a, a completing the square on that, and then I'm going to do a completing the square on that. The first one gives me x minus 2h squared, and I've now added in an extra 4h squared, so we're going to take it out straight away. And in here, I've got minus 1 quarter times y squared minus 2hy, plus, what have we got, 15 over 4, h squared minus a squared equals 0. Going really slowly here on purpose. If this is too slow for you, um, just skip ahead. I know from feedback that there are heaps of people out here who need me to go at about this pace. So here's x minus 2h squared. Now working with this, we get uh, minus 1 quarter into y minus h squared. Now we want to be a bit careful here with the completing the square because we've added in an h squared but we've timesed it by negative a quarter. So this time we've accidentally taken out that and we have to pop that back in. So we get plus one quarter h squared. Um, and we've got this sitting here. 
that needs to come in. So minus 4h squared plus 15 over 4h squared minus a squared. Right, we can clean some of this up because in here we've got 1 quarter and 15 quarters, 16 quarters is plus 4h squared. And here we've got minus 4h squared. And that whole thing equals 0. Next up is x minus 2h squared minus 1 quarter of y minus h squared equals a squared. So x minus 2h squared over a squared minus y minus h squared over 4a squared is equal to 1. And this is now in hyperbola form. Uh, I think we should say the center. So the center is at 2h and h, and we've got a squared is a squared. A squared is a squared, that's a bit stupid writing that, but there you go. And b squared is equal to 4a squared. All right, that's the first part done. Now the next part needs a little bit more thinking, but not that much more. If the tangent to this hyperbola is par parallel to the straight line y equals this, and E is the eccentricity, then show that this is true. So the key thing in here is that E squared is equal to 1 plus B squared over A squared. So let's just start by looking at what we can get out of that condition. E squared is equal to 1 plus B squared over A squared, which in this case, we've just written this down, is equal to 1 plus, ta-da, this is a cool moment where things just get much easier. So E squared is equal to 5. And that means that e squared minus 1 is equal to 4. Right, what were we asked for? Well, the tangent has to be parallel to the straight line y equals blah, blah, blah. Right, it looks bad, but actually y is equal to 4x. All right, so tangent is parallel to y equals y equals 4x. So what we're doing now is this straightforward. We're just finding dy by dx and we're setting it equal to 4 and we need to show that where that is true p minus q is equal to h. So let's go back and find dy by dx. Right, well the fastest way to find dy by dx I think is to go from my final version of the high hyperbola. We're going to do implicit differentiation on here. And if you aren't comfortable with implicit, I'm going to, all I'm using here is the chain rule. So let's just write down what's my equation of the hyperbola. So x minus 2h squared on a squared minus y minus h squared on 4a squared is equal to 1. Right, go back and watch the videos on implicit if you're not sure about this next step. So 2 times x minus 2h over a squared minus 2 times y minus h over 4a squared times dy by dx is equal to 0. Right, what I'm doing there is I'm taking each term and I'm differentiating it with respect to x. This one here, I can't differentiate straight away with respect to x, so I'm differentiating with respect to y and then chain ruling it out. All I've got to do now is to find an expression for dy by dx and set it equal to 4. So dy by dx is going to equal negative 2 times x minus 2h over a squared divided by this. So times 4a squared over negative 2y minus h. Lots of stuff is going to simplify away. So the a squareds go um, negative 2 and negative 2 happily disappear and we've got 4 times x minus 2h over y minus h, and that has to equal 4. That gives me the condition that x minus 2h, so solving this, x minus 2h is equal to y minus h, x minus y is equal to h, and at point p, 
the coordinates are P and Q, we have P minus Q equals H as required. So there you go, quite a few little bits and pieces to notice in this question. I guess the main thing for anyone who's still out there is that there's not that much in here about conics, right? Like it really is about completing the square and then doing some implicit differentiation. But where your knowledge of conics comes in is that you're not gonna freak out when you see this. You know that this is pretty easy once you've got used to it. And that you know that E is just a number that measures the stretchiness of the hyperbola. And that's given by this. Now the eccentricity um, formula is, I'm pretty sure it's on the scholarship formula sheet. So you'd always be given a bit of guidance there. If you've never seen conics though, and you suddenly see this thing about the eccentricity, and you've got E squared here, I think it's quite easy to think that it's a really, really hard problem. Um, but it's not. But trust me, there are some really, really awful conics questions in some old scholarship papers, and I'm going to try and YouTube those over the next few weeks. If you see any that you really, really want done, um, send me an email. So I'm not promising, it depends on time, but um, this is an area where some of the outstanding scholarship questions can sometimes pop up from. So it's well worth putting in a bit of time on this topic.